I am Shelley Hornstein, hello, <laughs> and I teach architectural history and visual art at York University. Uh, on behalf of our newly named School of the Arts, Media, Performance, and Design, I'd like to welcome you this afternoon to the Goldfarb, uh, the annual Joan and Martin Goldfarb Lecture in Visual Art. The Goldfarb Lecture in Visual Art is made possible through the generous support of Joan and Martin Goldfarb, long-standing benefactors of the Department of Visual Art and Art History, and the School of the Arts, Media, Performance, and Design at York University. And I'm delighted to say that they're with us this afternoon. Joan, <laughs> Joan and Martin Goldfarb's dedication and support for the arts at York has made this new named faculty, AMPD, into one of the largest and most comprehensive schools in North America. The Goldfarbs have been a major influence in laying a strong foundation for artistic and scholarly inquiry, not only at York University, but also across Canada. The renaming of the Joan and Martin Goldfarb Center for Fine Arts in recognition of Joan and Martin's generosity in 2001 has distinguished AMPT, the newly named faculty, and underscored our uniqueness positioning the school to be a leader in post-secondary arts education and research, both nationally and, I would say, internationally. The Joan Goldfarb Visual Arts Study Center and the Goldfarb Collection has enabled uh, us within the faculty to serve students and faculty members, but also to service the general public. It has had an enormous impact on experiential learning. We are delighted to have the AGO hosting this talk for this year. I'm grateful in particular, I just want to single out Kathleen McLean, Julia Galvez at the AGO, and for York's part of it, Amir Habashi, Nina Levitt, Bridget Clear, Carol Altilia, Sarah Parsons, and of course our Dean, Sean Brixey, who is also here today, uh, Dean of the School of the Arts, Media Performance and Design. Now, I've been a fan for a long time of Shimon Atti's work, and it began with the writing on the wall in one of Berlin's former Jewish neighborhoods. What struck me was how he not only moved the piece outside the classical museal or gallery architecture, but that he introduced a new element into the idea of uh, site-specific art, if we want to call it that, one that invited the existing architecture to serve not as a foil to his projections, but rather to be thoroughly imbricated in the project. His work has always been in dialogue with city space, with city communities that continue to animate it, and in some circumstances that who no longer animate it, and hence the notion of memory in many of his projects. So the conjunction of photographic projection, projection archives, history, uh, and architecture in the city on the one hand, blended somehow anachronistically with Berlin, uh, but also containing some sharp edges, I would argue, always is evocative of memories in so many ways, challenging, in fact, what a memorial can be or is altogether. His photographic work over time has increasingly turned to digital media, immersive multiple channel video installations and laser projections, while exploring and complicating the role of the citizen in the city, necessarily integrating, therefore, buildings and people and the life and the places of urban stories or the star stories that he tells us. In fact, uh, one of the laser projections that he did, and maybe he'll even show us a snap of it today or a, uh, an image of it today, um, <clears throat> which was done in the Lower East Side, um, is, as Atias described in his own words, a kind of peeling back of the wallpaper to reveal the histories buried underneath. Born in Los Angeles, he received his MFA degree in 1991, and since then he has received more than well over 20 commissions of new works in more than 10 countries around the world, and also had a mid-career retrospective at Boston's Institute of Contemporary Art. His work has been collected by prestigious institutions and in private collections internationally for the uh, public institutions, the prestigious institutions such as uh, MoMA, the Museum of Modern Art, LACMA, the LA County Museum of Art, Beaubourg, the Georges Pompidou Center, High Museum Atlanta, the de Jong, San Francisco, the Benton Art Museum in Stores, Connecticut, the Museum of Contemporary Photography in Chicago, the Corcoran in Washington, DC, to name but a few. 
Now, of course, if you haven't seen any of his work, um, there are many books that have been published and more to come, as I understand it, and several films that have been made as well on his work. Atiyah is the recipient then of many prestigious fellowships, including the John S. Guggenheim, the American Academy in Rome, Rome Prize, the National Endowment for the Arts, and the Pollock Krasner Foundation, the Radli Radcliffe, excuse me, the Radcliffe Institute for Advanced Study at Harvard, and the Kunstfund from Germany. In 2013, in fact, he was awarded the Lee Krasner Lifetime Achievement Award in Art. This May, uh, I will be teaching a summer institute at York University entitled Sites and Sites, spelled both ways, Memory, Monuments, and Place After the Digital Turn. Um, it is the annual Joan and Martin Goldfarb Summer Institute in Visual Arts that I will be um, heading up, now in its seventh year. And it will be offered to graduate students and the wider community, to uh, giving them the opportunity to engage with prominent international theorists, artists, curators, and critics through seminars, workshops, and public lectures. The theme, in fact, for this summer institute this year will explore the pervasiveness and shifting landscape of screen-based images in our everyday lives and the feverish pace at which we create, disseminate, upload, download, remember, forget, save, and delete them. And concurrently, we will examine what monuments, memorials, and public art mean as material objects in urban space. It is keeping in mind the Summer Institute that, uh, that uh, we have invited Shimon Ati to be our annual Goldfarb lecturer this year. Today's lecture marks the first phase then of the Summer Institute to announce this theme. What a pleasure then it is for me to welcome Shimon Ati to Toronto and to this stage to deliver the Goldfarb Lecture 2015. Hi there. That was a beautiful introduction. And let me just get my, the computer open. I closed it to save the battery power. Um, and thank you all for, for, for coming very much. And thank, a special thank you to Shelley for inviting me to give the Goldfarb Lecture this year. Um, when Shelley first approached me, she, she, gave, she, she communicated to me some of the themes and issues and concerns uh, for the Summer Institute this year. Uh, so I thought about them in terms of my own work. And so I have two, two tasks to do at the same time today. One is to, to present you, to, uh, uh, to, to give you an introduction to my work, but also to present it and frame it in light of some of the concerns of the Institute. Um, so on that note, what I'd like to do, I, I think the least interesting thing today is for you seeing me, to see my, my, my visage is not that interesting. I much rather prefer that you have a good experience of the art itself. So we're going to darken the lights completely. Uh, and then when, it, when we do Q&A afterwards, we'll have the lights back on. So I think on that note, I think we're good to go. So we're going to go dark. It, is the volume OK on the microphone? OK, great. Excellent. OK. I'm going to just lower the slide a little bit so I can read my notes a little bit better. That's the microphone, sorry about that. OK, so the first project I wanted to share with you was um, my first project after art school, The Writing on the Wall, uh, which I created in one of Berlin's former Jewish quarters. Um, and I have a long history or trajectory of creating temporary, ethereal um, installations uh, and many times creating them in order to photograph them. So even right there at, at that statement, you start to see the, that there's a relationship between the eph ephemeral images and material images. What you're looking at is a, an image of a building in one of Berlin's former Jewish quarters in 1991 or two, I'm not remembering exactly which year this installation was. And you're seeing a slide projection of a bookstore, of a former Hebrew bookstore, projected right onto the building's facade. And this Hebrew bookstore used to be located exactly at that address. So it's not photoshopped on. It's not collaged. It's not digital montage. 
I do, everything, <laughs> I do everything the hardest way possible. So if you walk down the street, you'll see me across the street with my generator and my slide projectors and my camera equipment. And you look at the building, you turn and look at, across the street and you see this building, you actually see the slide projection on location, on the building's facade. So if you experience it in situ, you say, oh, this is installation art, uh, this, is, this is a public project, et cetera. And if you see the photographs uh, in a museum or gallery later, uh, you say this is photography. And there are, there are differences between how the two work together or, you know, they, they, they actually operate in quite different ways. I think the projections on location are much more of a visceral, corporate, like a, a body experience, as most installation art is, right? Your own body is activated in the scale of the architecture, et cetera. And if you see the photographs, which are the more of the, the physical images, uh, in a museum or gallery, you, it's, it's, I think it's maybe more of an aesthetic experience. And it's also more controlled in the way that photography allows you to compose, frame, uh, and capture a, a particular moment in time. The projections typically lasted one or two evenings, and then I would go on to another location. By the way, they had very deadpan titles, just extremely poker face, um, uh, like uh, Grenadierstrasse, I don't remember the address now, uh, but Grenadierstrasse 40, uh, slide projection of former Hebrew bookstore. And as you might imagine, this project required a lot of research before I did even the first projection. I was in archives for three months, uh, studying and collecting uh, images of Jewish street life from this neighborhood uh, that were taken before the war, like 1920 to 1932, were the years that I was interested in. I deliberately did not want to show anything after 1933 because during the years of National Socialism, we know what happened, we don't need to be told. Uh, and then I had to get the old city maps. I, I didn't mention that this neighborhood was in East Berlin, the former East Berlin. And the, the former East German government renamed and renumbered all of the streets uh, after the Second World War. So I had to, you know, this was right after the wall came down. So, you know, I remember the, when I was like in Stabi Ost, like the, the East German city archive, you know, these huge, these kind of map portfolios and the dust spreading everywhere <laughs> when they would be open. And I'd, I'd have to find the city maps from 1925, 1926 with the old street names and lot numbers. But let me go on. Okay, slide projection of former Jewish resident. Uh, and as you can imagine, the responses of local residents, of people who lived in these buildings, to seeing the former residents of the buildings or shopkeepers was in many cases very interesting and sometimes uh, very dramatic. Uh, but in the Q&A, we can circle back to that if some of you want to know. Uh, slide projection of former Jewish residents. Now, again, we, 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 we get back to this issue, uh, one of the issues related to the Summer Institute of, um, in, in terms of uh, f physical images and virtual images and actual sites vers versus physical sites. And it is a complex, you know, some of these are hybrid notions. They're, they're not binary. They're not, they're not either or. But I should say that in the case of my own work, because ultimately, I, I think I am an installation artist at core. I mean, in art school, my main medium was photography, and I come from photography. But um, because I'm an installation art, artist, in terms of my, you know, one of my central artistic uh, engines or impulses, it is very important for me to actually touch physical sites and to intervene in situ where communities live. Slide projection of former Jewish-owned hat shop with patron, or with, with Jewish resident, actually. Slide projection of former Jewish cafe with patrons. And the photographer in me, uh, because again, my work combines both sort of ephemeral uh, and more uh, durable uh, elements. The photographer in me was very much considering the composition of the installations and the framing of them. I've always felt that um, ideas can live in more than one form or medium. The question to my mind is whether they do so effectively in each. Slide projection of former Jewish resident. And again, if you're walking on the street, you see this very 
this, this very um, ghostly image. Uh, and then if you encounter this in a museum, you're looking at a framed photograph. Slide projection of former religious book salesman. In the early 90s in East Berlin, you saw a lot of these kinds of very curious architectural juxtapositions. You'd have these pre-war buildings, like on the right, which are real, were in a state of disrepair, and then these buildings from the 60s and 70s, which were basically uh, socialist housing projects, public housing, and you'd have them right up against each other. The neighborhood today is completely different. When I, and I lived in this neighborhood. It was called Schweinenviertel. And, uh, you know, back then it was like the, the most derelict, grim, you know, it was the wrong side of the railroad tracks in Berlin. And today it's the most expensive, chicest, most trendy neighborhood. You, it's like the Williamsburg of Berlin, if I gave a New York analogy. Um, but there's this other issue, um, which is that um, Shelley also posed a question, when images disappear, what do we remember? And what I want to tell you is it's very interesting. You know, I did this project 20 years ago, and you, could, you would not believe how often it happens that I get emails from people who tell me, um, just out of the blue, tell me, uh, Shimon, I still remember the projection you did down the block from me. And every time I walk past that building, I, 